All right, everybody, how are y'all doing? It's good to see you guys again. This weekend, I did not go to Cedar Point, but a lot of ideas and thoughts have been mulling around in my head. I am going again this coming weekend, which is the first weekend that Cedar Point will be open throughout the entire week. So, of course, the weekend's open, but then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's all open too. So I'm super excited to go. But I've been thinking about, and actually I've had a couple comments on my last video about what you should do at Cedar Point for the first couple of hours. And so I thought that I'd kind of give just a quick synopsis of what my theories are for this year, uh, what my plan is going to be, and what I'm going to be testing out the next time that I go to the parks. That doesn't mean that this is a foolproof plan, but it is the thing that I'm going to try first. And try we will. We will try out all three of these plans this coming week uh, because I will be going for three days in a row to ride every ride at Cedar Point, um, which I cannot wait to do. So all of these theories are going to be thoroughly tested, and you can watch in the video how well it works, how many rides I was able to complete each day. So let's get into it. If you haven't subscribed yet, Please subscribe, hit that subscribe button right now, press that like button, and also give me any questions about the parks that you may have uh, that I can answer. This is how you should spend the most crucial part of your day at Cedar Point. Three different ways. So I say three different ways because there are basically three different ways that you can enter the park. You can enter the park as a base ticket holder, you can enter the park as a gold pass holder, or you can enter the park as a platinum pass holder. Those are your three options, essentially. Now, if you are someone who is staying at one of the resorts, you may not have a platinum pass, but you will be treated as though you have a platinum pass, especially if you are staying at Hotel Breakers. Um, I have never stayed at one of those resorts before, and until I like open a Patreon or something like that, I don't know that I'm going to because Hotel Breakers is real expensive. So let's start from the very beginning because I hear it's a very good place to start. And let's talk about all three of these options. Now, if you are a base ticket holder, if the park opens at 10 o'clock, you are allowed to get in at 10 o'clock, from what I understand. It is possible that Cedar Point might let people in a little bit early. Um, like I said earlier, this will be tested. I will check it out and I will talk to cast members about when they let people with base tickets in to the park. However, even if you are able to get in early, you won't be able to get into any lines unless you have a gold ticket or a platinum pass ticket. Attention guests waiting in line, please make sure to have your gold, platinum, or resort ticket out. Gold, platinum, or resort ticket out so I can see it. So, I know if you are a base ticket holder, you cannot get right onto one of the rides or into the lines. For one of the rides, they'll just tell you, you can't go in right now, you're gonna need to wait here. The first thing you should do as a base ticket holder is you're going to come in at 10 o'clock. The park is already going to be partially filled. You're going to have to compete with some lines a little bit early. My recommendation for you at that point is to ride the middling rides like Gatekeeper or like Val Raven. They're not as small as like Iron Dragon. Those are going to get pretty big lines pretty quickly. However, if you try to go straight to the back of the park and you try to hit the rides that are in Frontier Town, um, you try to hit the the big ones, you know, like you try to go to Steel Vengeance right away, you're going to be in a three hour line from the very beginning, almost guaranteed. Those rides are immediately popular. And especially right now with Frontier Festival going on too, um, that back of the park is extremely packed from the very beginning. Um, so I do not recommend going straight to the back of the park. In my estimation, 
don't waste time while you're walking across the park. That's never helpful. I kind of recommend trying to hit rides that are close in one area or another. That goes for all three different ticket designations. <laughs> Now, if you are a Gold Pass member, you can get into the park early and you can get in line for rides at the front of the park, even up to right at nine o'clock if the park opens at 10 o'clock. So up to an hour early. Um, I think they are supposed to let you in at 930, but it looks to me like they just kind of let everybody in. But you can only get the rides that are at the front of the park. So take full advantage of that. At 9 o'clock, maybe grab a snack, grab some sort of a drink, um, and hang out in line for whatever the ride is that you want to ride first. That includes Gatekeeper, that includes Valraven, that includes Blue Streak, that includes Raptor. Hopefully you can get maybe a 15 minute line in one of them uh, when 9.30 comes around and then you can book it straight to another ride and get another, I don't know, maybe 20 minute line. That might be the most helpful for you. That way you can take most full advantage of that first half hour in the park. Like you may have seen in my last video, there were people lining up very early on uh, with gold passes. So don't be afraid to line up. Um, maybe don't do just tons of shopping early on in the day like I did the last time I was there. <laughs> Now, if you have a Platinum Pass, things change dramatically for you. With a Platinum Pass, you are allowed into the park an hour before park opening. So, 9 o'clock if the park opens at 10 o'clock. And you are able to go straight to the back of the park. At the back of the park, it is exclusive access for you to ride anything that you want. I saw a lot of 10-minute waits at the back of the park when I checked out the app the last time that I was there. So go straight back there and hit whatever you want. <laughs> of course, I would recommend hitting those two big ones right away, especially the two in Frontier Town. Um, Millennium Force and Dragster, uh, of course, they still get very big lines, but they don't seem to get as big of lines as our Frontier Town duo. Um, those ones really seem to get the biggest lines, so you want to hit those just absolutely as fast as you possibly can um so if you can get in there and you can get an hour long wait you still have quite possibly saved yourself two hours of waiting uh because it's not unusual to see a three hour wait for those frontier town rides <laughs> so anyway if you guys have any questions please leave them down in the comments like i said this is a little bit of conjecture for me right now. This is me mulling over what I learned this last weekend and me going, okay, now when I go this next weekend, what am I going to try to hit? So I, like I said, I will be testing this out and I will be planning to be there for three days in a row at least. Um, the first day I will pretend like I don't have any pass at all. And I will enter when everybody else enters with just regular tickets. The second day, I will enter with a gold pass. And the third day, I will buy my platinum pass. If it happens to take a fourth day, then I will buy a fast pass. And I will complete all the rest of the rides with the fast pass. But each day, I'm going to amp up what we're going to do. So like I said, subscribe. We're going to have tons of fun on this channel. And you guys are going to get to see all kinds of information that's going to help you a ton. Come and join me. Uh, let's see how many rides we can hit. And let's see if we can learn some stuff on the way. And really get some tips and tricks on how to make the most of our days at Cedar Point. So thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys have a good one. And um, happy summer. Let's go. Let's ride some rides. See you guys. Bye.